everyone, this is Sarah Park here and welcome back to my channel where I talk about my pregnancy journey and everything I learned about pregnancy through this journey. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about a specific gene mutation called the MTHFR mutation and how it affects your pregnancy. So as usual, let's start with this week's update. So this is the 15th week of my pregnancy and this week my belly was growing a lot more. It seems like I have a lot more physical changes than in my first trimester. And every day, especially after dinner, I just feel my belly bloated. And uh, most of the time just lying on the sofa like a Snornax and just feeling it like being stretched out so much. And this week as I'm going up and down the stairs, I can feel a little bit more weight. And so it's a little bit um, harder for me than before, but it's still not um, causing a significant challenge to my daily tasks. Another thing that I tried to do this week is that I, I started using my belly balm a lot more frequently because I can notice the belly growing a lot more. So I don't want to have any stretch marks. So as a precaution, I'm using my belly balm and I'll probably do a later video to talk about the products that I use to take care of my body during this time. On top of using the belly balm, I'm switching my um, sleeping position because I watched a video that says that as your belly is growing bigger, it's better to sleep on your side than on your back so that um, the baby doesn't cause too much pressure on your spinal cord, on your, on your body. And so I am a back sleeper usually, so I'm starting to change my habit of sleeping so that I can sleep on my side. And so this week, um, some nights, it, it was hard for me to fall asleep because I'm just trying to adjust to a different position. But as I'm getting more used to it, then it'll, it'll get better. And the few times that I did end up sleeping on my back, I did notice that my, my lower back was hurting a lot more. It probably means that I have to strengthen my, my back muscle again. And as you know, because of this quarantine, my exercise level has decreased significantly. So I, I have to pick that up again and to intentionally strengthen my back muscles. So let's talk about what is MTHFR. It's not a swearing word. Although the first time that I heard of it, I'm like, empty what? It's not a swearing words. It's who am I kidding? I am not going to be able to do justice in explaining MTHFR because, uh, as you know, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nutritionist, and so I think there are much better videos out there explaining what really MTHFR gene mutation is. And uh, in the description below, I'm going to link some videos if you guys want to find out more about it. Um, but instead of explaining scientifically what this gene mutation is, I'm going to talk to you about my own experience encountering this gene mutation and um, how it has impacted my pregnancy. So my journey in learning about MTHFR all started with my first phone call with my midwife when I was trying to arrange for a tour at the birth center. And I remember that at the end of the phone call, she told me, oh, by the way, if you're taking prenatal vitamins now, stop taking it because there are better options out there. And I was like, at first I was taking it back. I was like, oh, okay. And so I followed her instruction, even though I didn't really understand why, but because she's a health professional, she's a birthing expert, so I listened to her. But at the same time, I was wondering, why did she tell me to not take my prenatal vitamins? Because many women going to their OBGYN, I'm sure they've heard of their OBGYN suggesting to them that if they want to um, start trying for a baby, start taking prenatal now. And so I started taking prenatal vitamin before I was pregnant, when we were trying to get pregnant. So hearing that really made an impression in my heart that was like, starting to wonder why is it that she suggested me to not take my prenatal vitamins? And so I found out more about it when I went to my first visit at my midwife's place where she gave me a bunch of documents explaining all the different type of procedures, standard procedures that are out there and that other people suggest and what are some of the adverse effects that people might not be talking about. And so in one of those handouts, there is a handout about what MTHFR gene mutation is and how it can affect your pregnancy. 
but because I was receiving too many handouts that day, I didn't really read through the document explaining what it is, um, but I, I knew that this this thing existed. So then a couple weeks later, they took my blood for a lab to test whether or not I have this gene mutation. And that's when I realized that this gene mutation actually has great implication on um, pregnancy. But then at the same time, I asked them, so if this gene mutation has great implication on pregnancy, does everyone test for it? And surprisingly, I found out that not too many OBGYNs actually will test for it. And many pregnant women doesn't even know about it. That's when I started having this idea that I want to make this video to talk about it so that um, people who are pregnant, people who are thinking about getting pregnant will know about this information to ensure the best health of their baby. So after doing some research on this gene mutation, I found out that this gene mutation actually has a lot of potential harmful effect on the pregnancy. For example, um, studies shown that it's related to multiple losses of pregnancy and it can be related to infertility and it can also be related to uh, birth defects in babies, especially the baby's nervous system development. So basically what this gene mutation does it, is that it affects woman's ability to convert folic acid into its usable form, folate. And sometimes it, it can also affect women's ability to break down folate itself to be able to use for the development of their baby. So as some of you know, folate is really important uh, for the development of baby's neural system. Lack of folate during especially the first trimester can result in some birth defects such as spina bifida. So a lot of the prenatal vitamins out there, they say that they include folate, but it's actually folic acid, which is a synthetic form of folate, a cheaper form of folate. And that folic acid, if you have this gene mutation, it's hard for you to break that down. And so what happens is that your body ends up having a lot of this folic acid circulating through your system that you're not able to use it. And so your blood becomes more toxic from this increased amount of folic acid. And studies have also shown that there's a correlation between increased amount of folate and autism. And again, I will link all those studies in the description down below. So for those of you who like doing researches, you can look it through. And so when I found out about it, I was like, wow, how come not a lot of nutritionists or a lot of doctors are talking about this gene mutation and its adverse effect on pregnancy because as you can see it can severely affect the development of a baby and it can also affect a woman's ability to to carry that baby to full term so i think this message is really important for pregnant women and for women who are thinking about getting pregnant so continue with my own story with MTHFR. After I got back my lab result, they told me that I actually was tested positive for this gene mutation, which is actually quite common. Uh, a lot of women actually has one or the other form of this gene mutation. And the solution was that she referred me to a nutritionist that she works hand in hand with. So when I saw my nutritionist, she explained to me a little more about this gene mutation and how the standard treatment for this gene mutation is a combination of different supplements together including uh, a form of methylated folate but this combination treatment can be actually very expensive but what she has found is that instead of taking that expensive treatment just by taking a supplement of choline alone with a diet that's rich in folate uh, it can actually help women uh, reverse the effect of folate deficiency. So then she has prescribed to me a bottle of choline supplement that I take one or two pills every meal and also a list of food that is rich in folate. And so she said that um, by taking choline and just the food that's rich in folate, sometimes she found that in as short as one week of a time, she can notice a difference in women who have this MTHFR gene mutation. So um, the takeaway that I want you guys to get from today's video is that if you are pregnant or if you are thinking about getting pregnant, it is so important to ask your health provider to test you for this MTHFR gene mutation. And if your healthcare provider for some reason doesn't want to test you for that, there are some 
test kits out there such as 23andMe that can also give you this information. And also, if you are tested positive for the mutation, it's not too big of a deal. Just ask to see a nutritionist who knows about um, this mutation and then talk to this nutritionist about choline as an alternative treatment and see if this nutritionist can also give you choline and also a list of food that's rich in folate. If you are already pregnant and already in your late term your pregnancy and you never really tested for this gene mutation, uh, I would highly suggest you to do so. Um, and if you tested positive for this gene mutation and you have been taking a prenatal vitamin that's rich in folic acid, uh, I will also recommend you to go see a nutritionist because chances are that you might have a heightened level of folic acid that's not metabolized uh, in your body that's just flowing. And so a good nutritionist can actually help you uh, reverse the effect of having too much folic acid flow in your, in your bloodstream. And so this is all my suggestions for today and I hope this information was helpful for you guys. And again, if you like my videos, please like, comment, and share. And also subscribe to my channel and also let me know in the comment below if there's any other topic that you want to hear more about. And so this is for this week and I'll see you next week. Bye!